Hey, so you'll never guess what I'm gonna do today. Well, maybe you can by the way I'm dressed. <laughs> I'm the yellow guy, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going deep and I'm going under there to steam clean. So let's get to her. Slowly but surely I'm falling in love. I'm falling in love with you. Slowly but surely you're winning my heart. But surely I'm losing my heart And I'm losing my heart to you Slowly but surely my dreams will come true If I spend my lifetime with you You're just what I wanted You're just what I needed You're my every dream come true Much longer. I'm falling in love with you. Slowly but sure. I'm falling in love, I'm falling in love with you Slowly but surely you're winning my heart And you're winning my heart too You're just what I wanted You're just what I need You're my every dream come true much longer I'm falling in love with you yes I'm falling in love with you okay I've been uh, cleaning up the shop in preparation for bringing probably gonna bring the crane in first so I can work on it I've been out here for two days I can't get started till about 11 o'clock so because it's just too cold and it was brutally cold today anyway I had my slicker on and I was freezing to death under there now anyway, I got my warranted block heater so I don't know why but they gave me a 2000 watt one this time the first one was 1500 man that baby puts out some heat it's working so I don't really like the way they have it plumbed up here I'm I don't know this well this got to be below the thermostat so it's got a thermal cycle through here and then down the bottom of the block for the cold water back return but I've had it plugged in for quite a while before I started steam cleaning and I didn't seem to have a problem with it there's a front panel here I took off and as you can see they've been replacing the pipes with hoses and that may be what I end up doing but the drawback to that is, is you're gonna reduce your flow I don't think the inside of those hoses are the same diameter of the inside of those pipes but and then so I've got one push-pull cable control that's broke and then the other two are stuck so I got to figure out what's going on there because one runs the the boom lift the crowd and then the regular hoist I can't run that outrigger. I can't run that one. 
I can run that one, but not the one on the other side. And I can't crab steer the rear axle as oil pours out. So I got three problems. I can see oil there. I don't know where it's coming out of here. I need an extra set of eyes to tell me where this is coming out. Alrighty, so I got the one line up front that was cracked right there. And I put an Ace Bonino Jeff Anderson braze job on it. If that doesn't hold, I'm going to have to replace it with a hose, which they've already done with like two of them. It split like looks like a seam, like that seamed tubing. It's not seamless. I don't know why, but boy, she blew her out good. So we're going to put cap paint over it. That should give it 50% more strength and value. <laughs> See how it works. Dark outside now, so I can't put it on tonight. I'll have to do it tomorrow. So I got that front pipe on and it was the supply for, uh, which one was it? The left, I can't remember which outrigger it was, left front. So that one goes up and down, the other one goes up and down. But the cylinder's leaking pretty good. Um, so my other leak is under there. It's a tube and it runs the right rear outrigger. So my rear steer works, no leaks. Everything's good there. Um, it's just that outrigger leaking real bad out the seal. So, I'll have to get a drip pan under there, and then I'm going to have to crawl under there. And that line is like 9,000 miles long. And I'll have to see if I can figure out. Pretty sure it's this one right here. And it goes way in the heck up there. Get it out and braise it up. And then check some of these hoses and these other lines, make sure they're not rubbing on anything. Anyway, we're getting closer. So, onward and upward. The old galleon. So I got this line out and something rubbed on it. Rubbed a hole in her. Anyway, you got to get a load of how long this thing is. I had one heck of a time getting it out of there. So there's the end there. Stretched clear across the crane. Comes clear out over here. So there's two metal pipes they've already just gotten rid of and replaced them with the hydraulic hose. And I could do that 
I could just take this pipe and measure it for length and have a hose made. But you know me, eh? that costs money. We ain't doing that shit. Okay, Jeff lost on this one. We're going to be doing a hydraulic hose. So I had that end over that outrigger top post and then in the vise and uh, something happened to that end. It fell off of that post and then the hose, the pipe collapsed as I was brazing it right there. So she's no good. So it's Friday, Saturday. I can't get anything done. There's no way I'm going to get a hydraulic hose built. Doc got it. So I guess tomorrow we'll get the oil out of the tank. See if I can get some filters. Take off that one ram. Figure out how to get these outrigger rams out. There's a bolt that goes through there and I think a nut on the other side you got to hold with a wrench. And then they got check valves on them. So I'd have to take the check valves out to get them to collapse or to lay down so I can undo the end off of them and then pull the whole barrel out. So Jeff has lost that battle with that pipe. I probably should have just got a hose to start with. But, ah, I mean, I fixed the other one. It was fine. And I was really concerned about that. That, I, you know, if I didn't have it in the vise good past the where it was cracked and then the other end of that pipe supported, when it got hot, it would collapse because it's such thin metal. So I got this uh, cylinder part and surprisingly, for all the water and stuff you can still see the hone marks and it. it's not really rusted and i put the ram in here but just to illustrate how old this is they use packing on the ram and i'm sure there's packing in the gland packing on the piston and the whole machine's that way the whole thing packing even that great big cylinder in the middle packing so i've had enough for today oh i took this lid off to show you looks like milk donut so when i took it off this was just dripping water so i know it's condensing tons of water Tons of water. Okay, this is the gland, the head, and so this is all one piece brass along with the, the bushing inside of it. And it looks like somebody's been into this and must have replaced this or something because they have just beat the top of this to death. I mean, they smashed this down nine miles. And then it looks like they went after it trying to get the seal out and damaged it. So when I put the seal back in, I'm going to have to glue it. Some bearing mount, I guess. Anyway, this is an interesting deal. Everything's packing and this is the packing goes inside here to seal it. And, uh, She's kind of rusty. Hopefully I can get that cleaned up good. But every bit of that came out in chunks, hard chunks. None of it came out. The only thing that came out in one piece was there was an O-ring inside of there. But this is, this is what's left of the glands or the packing. I mean, I'm going to have to call my buddy Andy Bloomquist. Maybe I have to send him this packing, see if he can figure out what size it is and everything so I may have figured out a cure to keep condensation out of the tank because even if you fill it 
practically clear up you're going to have expansion and contraction you're going to have some air in there so what i've discovered is they sell hydroscopic breathers you do not want one of these kind this is just a cat one this is just a filter the air so a hydroscopic breather they make them in all kinds of different sizes they got a cool one it, it's a spin on cartridge you'd screw it in there and the cartridge has desiccant in it so I don't know how often you'd end up changing it but uh, I think that's the way to go that way as the air goes in that's laden with moisture it takes that moisture out and minimizes the chance of condensation in there now i did notice this, this the other day this is bent and the paint's kind of bent or i mean cracked that looks like a crack there we could be getting moisture in through here so once i get this tank drained and cleaned out we'll probably have to v this out and i'll get jake to weld that up make sure we haven't got a problem there but this piece does not go down in the tank it's actually sitting on top of the tank but if that's cracked and that's bent that could go under here and you can feel under here that it's it's bent so it could certainly be cracked there so there's another spot Mm, look at all that yummy oil so anyway i would think a guy's probably going to want that full within probably an inch and a half two inches of the top that would be my guess what's yours all right so i got the oil out got about 25 gallons or so here's the first filter you can see the water was destroying the paper. So this one had a dresser number on it, but it was collapsed. Look at that. Anyway, it's got like a triangle shaped deal in there and I couldn't get it out. You can see the three grooves. That's where the triangle deal was. So I had to get a bar up in there and try to pry that out. And then I finally gave up and put the bar on this U-shaped piece that screws on a big stud. And then that was the only way I got that filter out. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, I didn't, I didn't put a dresser filter in it. So I wonder if the last time I changed it, the one came out. So I thought there was only one filter. I don't know. Or I couldn't get that one out. What a bunch of BS. I took a pig mat and put clear down there in the bottom. You can't see it to soak up the water and whatever debris was left there. I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of the drain. I put a great big uh, putty scraper on a lath and I s swept all the oil and stuff over to the drain. And I just throw a pig mat in there to soak it up. So I needed my gantry crane back here to lift this outrigger cylinder out and it wouldn't clear that gearbox or the counterweight on this side. So I took my Napa jack and jacked under that. <laughs> I had it in the air about two feet to get over it. Anyway, it worked so I'm going to attempt to pull this baby out. So they use a 
rubber hose here, which I'm going to replace that. And then that's the check valve so that it can't, if you blew a hose or whatever, it can't come down. So I'm going to replace all three of those hoses on that one and the three on the other one when I get it out, if I take it out. I, I'm, I, at this point, I'm thinking I'll fix this one and the right front one. The other two don't leak yet. Ha ha. And uh, call it good. What do you think? Uh, I'm really beginning to love this thing. Love it! Slowly but surely I'm falling in love I'm falling in love with you Alright, so I've got the cylinder apart for the outrigger. Uses the same packing as the steering. But the gland seal looks to me like a U-cup. That's the biggest piece I could get out of there. Anyway, that, that packing sure made some wavy gravies in the chrome. So I called Andy about the steering cylinder. Um, he was going to look for me and see what he had here. It's just so hard to get what you need though when there's no numbers on anything. And I'm not a hydraulic expert, but I'm assuming this thickness is critical. And then uh, diameter. I, d I don't know if they make different diameters in here. I would think they'd all be standard, but these are things I do not know. And then I'm pretty sure this takes a two inch seal, but uh, they've hammered on it so bad. It's so. Got to have to go in there and see if it'd clean up and a two inch seal is going to fit tight. I wish I lived closer to Andy. I'd just drive up there and have him fix it. But you know me. So I love this uh, hand cleaner. I don't remember who sent it to me. The one flipping the bird. <laughs> it's good stuff. I love it. So I'm going to clean my hands, go in the house. So. I found the serial number on this baby and it's uh, let me ask you guys maybe somebody knows how old this is so it's basically a 682 serial number engine a UD 282 682 serial number 680 second one ever built so how old is that so cylinder update I got this out somebody beat on it they've ground on us <laughs> they messed up the sill surface they beat on the face you just can't hit brass with a hammer you just can't so what I did is I ask on a Facebook group I follow it's hydraulic cylinders really sharp guy over in England told me to put some heat to it so I basically heated the brass part up but this got hot too and then I just ran cold water on it and then it popped it out oh telephone it's Albert Rock Let's see what Albert wants you there Albert stupid phone Okay, so I finally got this apart. I heat, I had to heat it up and let it cool down. Uh, brass shrinks more than cast iron. So it goes right back in. This one was a little more tough. They'd put some sealant on it. Um, the only way that was ever coming apart is if I heated it anyway. So now I'm waiting for some seals. And we get that all figured out and then put it back together. But this is the only way you have to take this gland out to be able to put the seals down in there, the packing seals, because you can't scrunch them up and put them through here. It's not going to work. So they're meant to come apart like that. 
and then you put your seal in down in there and then put that back in if it's pretty snug you get down to there this one just drops in and maybe that's why they put the sealant on it i don't know crazy stuff man old school old stuff so anyway i just don't have the gumption to tear any more cylinders off today i want to get these two put back together first and then i got this mess after i get a d9 engine in here so send me some geritol <laughs> Took up Mr. Griffey out here. He don't really want to be here. He was, he only wanted to be here because I had something he could eat. And that's really the only reason he's my friend. Is he's, I give him stuff to eat. You want to go to the house? Wanna go outside? There you go. See you later. You want to go to the house? You can go by yourself. You're a big boy. See you later. <laughs> Oh, he's coming back. Are you coming back to see me? Okay. So, I went and got some hoses made for this check valve here. And I opened that up and got it all cleaned out. All the crap. I really... Need... Yeah, I hear you. I know. Kind of... Hey, come busy right now. Can can you just hold it for a minute? Sit, sit, sit down. Sit, that's a good boy. Just a minute. Anyway, all these valves need taken apart and cleaned. As much uh, yucky oil, watery oil, just general garbage was in there. Anyway, you gonna stay here and help me? Mr. Griff gonna stay here and help me? Are you? Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, you're a good boy, aren't you? What? You gonna get that weed? Get it. Go out and see if there's kitties or deer. Is there kitties? Go get them. I trick him every morning go out the house when he doesn't want to go pee. I tell him there's kitties out there. He's gone. Oh, geez, look what Jeff bought. What is this? So this is an Ingersoll. This is uh, a 40 volt. This is a twin battery baby right here. This takes two 20 volt batteries. Ha, check that out. So the one with the extended anvil has 3,000 foot pounds of torque on undo. And the one with the short anvil has 2,600. I don't know why you'd get more undo torque with the longer anvil. Somebody explain that to me. But anyway, so you got, uh, let's see, what do we got here? You got forward and reverse. That's like 250 foot pounds, 500, and there's 2,600. Anyway, this is going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun! That's reverse. And then forward are these ones here. Oh, don't want to tighten it, dummy. Well, that wasn't even hard. Okay, this is inch and a half. So I need inch and a half. What do I do with the inch and a half? So I get these pins out of here. You got to turn them, loosen them up, beat them out. <sighs> Come on, Jeff. Oh, that'll tear your hand off. Trying to hold that with one hand. Good. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to whack that with a hammer. 
Anyway, cool wrench. Can't wait to go try it on something really wicked. I have to go out try it on D9 track pads. So I pulled this other steering cylinder off the rear and this was stuck clear up here. It hadn't even been driven into here. And then it got painted. But this slid right out of the head here. And the doggone thing had packing in it, but it's got like a giant crater in there. Right there. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, this one had actual real packing in it. So I talked to Andy. He's sending me some packing because you couldn't put a U-cup in there. And I'm also concerned about how pitted and rough this is. I think I'd actually probably like to go back to packing in all of these uh, because they're not going to get used that much. And I think packing will seal better, you know, if that bore's pitted. So, oh, and he's, he's sending me some more of these. So he's in Boise. So if he sends it out tomorrow, that's Thursday. I might get it Saturday, maybe. Um, all of our mail goes to Salt Lake first. Can you believe that? If I mail a letter and it goes around the block a mile away, it's going to go to Blackfoot. It's going to go all the way to Salt Lake, come back to Blackfoot, and then go to that guy's house. Isn't that government efficiency? That's, it's just insane. So anyway... I got that one pin out. I got the valve undone and off. It's laying on the floor. So all I got to do is get the other pin out and lift that cylinder out and get it apart. It's the other one that's leaking. But I still think, based on what I've seen, the junk inside those barrels, uh, I think I need, they all need to come off and get cleaned out and resealed. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I got, besides the uh, Ingersoll Impact, I bought a Wilton Vice. I can't remember which one is a 1745, whatever. Anyway, I bought that one, so we're gonna build a bench here. Matt's going to get all of his stuff out of here. Damn GoPro, GoPro camera quit. Matt's gonna get all his stuff cleaned out of there, and then we're gonna build a bench. To set up the hose press and hang all the dies and everything on the wall so you need a vice buy that so i bought one that was i think i paid 745 bucks for that good morning so i gotta go to work today damn it <coughs> Dude, come on. okay find the right key gray key Go plugs Wait, light. Wait, wait. Just about. I'm almost there. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm almost there. Almost. There we go. Okay. Okay, so. I got some packing and some sealing coming from. Uh, Andy Bloomquist at, at Advantage Machine and then I can get assembling some cylinders I gotta go to work today so I'm not gonna be able to work on this all I gotta do is pull this one pin I can get this other ram out anyway you guys have a Merry Christmas I will see you next week and uh, hopefully by then I've got a whole bunch of cylinders put together and we got quite a bit done on this crane so we can get it out of here. Anyway, enjoy your weekend. Have a great Christmas.